So, I found a fantasy series that reminded me of basically a combination of Earth, Sea, and, you know, the Lord of the Rings. So, here it stands in the high fantasy shelf. And I want to talk about the name of the wind. Hello, fellow book clusters. I mean, bruh. Hello, fellow plot clusters. It is I, Aaron the Plot Cluster, and today I got this awesome book, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Roth. Plus, I have no idea how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry if I will pronounce anything wrong in this video because, as you know, pronunciation isn't the strongest suit in my book. So, well, let's get right on to it. Now, this book basically is um, a narration format of this person named Kvoth. Kvoth. I have no... Kvoth. I have no idea how to say his name because it's really hard to pronounce. So I'm just gonna go with Kvoth for now, okay? And basically it's about this guy named Kvoth who basically ran away and now is running an inn. However, this guy named the Chronicler goes and goes and tells him, Hey, yo, aren't you, you call yourself Kote, but aren't you Kvoth, the legendary king killer assassin magician person? And he's like, no. And then Chronicle's like, what do you mean, no? You you base you are him, aren't you? And he's like, very fine. And then Chronicle basically wants, as his name suggests, to chronicle the story of Kvoth and his adventures. So Kvoth goes, okay, fine. Give me three days, and I will tell you the story. And I will tell you the story, and you will listen, and you will write every single part of it without a single part of it missing, okay? And the Chronicle goes, okay. And so it starts. Now, now, Kvothi starts with this story. As a child, he was one of the Ra, who, uh, who are a bunch of people, a bunch of performers, who perform plays, carnival tricks, and all sorts of things, and travel around in caravans. And he was a prodigy. He learned things so, so quickly, and he had a brilliant mind, a brilliant mind that could learn anything. Then he meets an arcanist, or a person who can use sympathy, and knows the names of things, so they can bring them to the wheel, to, well, to their, to their disposal. So basically, this arcanist goes, okay, I can teach you. And he's like the gener generic Obi-Wan Kenobi star mentor. And Kvoth learns from him, and eventually the arcanist finds his own love in, and settles down in the town, and the row moves on. However, shortly after that, when they're resting in Lodestones, and his father, he's creating this, this, these songs about the Chandrian, this mysterious group of people which literally everyone has a folktale story or song about, but apparently no one, there's no really accurate things about him. And there, here's a song about them. And this is the song. So I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna recite or sing whatever, Kvoth and Dennis version, who I will talk about a bit later because it is, well, the cooler version in my opinion. When the hair fire turns to blue, what to do, what to do? Run outside, run and hide. When your bright sword turns to rust, who to trust, who to trust? Stand alone, standing still. See a woman pale as snow, silent come and silent go. What's their plan, what's their plan? Chandrian, Chandrian. And so that is the song. And I'm gonna put my iPad away now. Now it's the song. And so, and and that is just like one of the children's songs about the Chandrian. And there's so many versions of it. And the only things that's the same is metal rust around them and this blue fire. And that's that's basically it. And someone pale skin, but you know the the versions differ. And basically, his father wanted to create a song about the Chandrian. It's a completely accurate song about the Chandrian, about the history, where they came from, and the story. And he's capturing the story. However, one day, when Kvoth came back to the caravans after gathering some herds, he finds blue fire of the, and the torches, the red flames that turned to blue. And when he touched the heavy metal wheels of the caravans, they rusted and broke. And Kvothi ran towards the campfire. And there were a group of men. Pale 
and a faceless man was in the fire, talking, talking of things that he did not understand. And they, he knew at once, were the Chandra. And he managed to get away from there, and after a period of living in the wild, he goes to Tarbian, which is basically a horrible, horrible city where there's a lot of beggars, and there's a lot of people in bad situations. And Kvothe basically ends up in that same situation because, you know, he's, he literally has zero cash. And so he, he becomes really, really sad and he becomes a beggar and he loses his mind and all he thinks about is surviving for a couple of years. Then he sort of comes to a census, starts to gather some money, starts to think about the university. Now the university is basically Hogwarts, except a lot dreamy, I guess. Because you get it's basically like a college for like really really small people, so it's like a combination of Hogwarts and like Harvard. Everyone wants to go there. Everyone wants to learn from there. And you either have to be really really smart or really really rich to get into the university. And Kvothe didn't have a penny on him, so basically he had to be really really smart. What he did was he listened outside of people's lectures, so they he would he could guess what they would ask him so that he could enter. And he goes in there and he just answers other questions because he's cheating but that's smart because he has no money and he manages to get into the university and with a full scholarship because he's a god of course he he still has to do some things to you know actually live because you know he they, he, they didn't pay for everything if you know what i mean so he just he just sort of lives in the university learns sort of all sorts of new stuff um gets in trouble with some of the teachers because they just naturally hate some part of him and yeah, that sort of thing. And basically, after a bit in the university, he goes out and into the next town where he learns to, where you know he knows how to play the lute because you know the uh, of performers and he he was a prodigy, so obviously he learned how to play the lute. And he goes ahead and managed to buy a really, really, really old, dusty, and cheap one. He got it, and he started to play it, and he regained some of his skill. And he plays it in this place where musicians perform and get patrons and pay, get paid and all sorts of things. And he goes there, and he does so. And there is where he meets Denner. Now, actually, I forgot to mention, but he actually met Denner a little bit before beforehand when she, they, she was traveling to the university by basically um, tagging along on this party of people. And he meets Denner, and he basically thinks Jesus Denner is the most prettiest the most beautiful person that I've ever met, and here comes the generic love interest. And he, he gets really, really involved with Denna, and he tries to go after her, and sometimes respecting her space, sometimes just loving her, and etc, etc. And there's all sorts of love and conflict, all sorts of conflicts in the university, like this one student really, really hates him. He's basically Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter, <laughs> and those sort of dynamics go on. Now, Skipping a little bit, he hears that a, a, a wedding has been crushed, and the entire wedding, the, everyone in the wedding, dies, and then and blue fire was seen. So he's like, "Is this is this Chandria?" So he goes, he runs over there, he runs over there, and he 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 gets in a lot of debt. He buys a horse, he buys everything, and he just. Uses all his time and money and resources to get the heck over there ASAP. And he goes over there and he goes to, goes to the inn and looks for a witness. And there's apparently one witness. And as you may have guessed, it's Denna. And she goes, uh, I don't really remember anything, but there was blue fire and I don't know what's going on. So Kvothe goes, okay, I want to go look at the farm then where the wedding went on. And um, Denna, she also is looking for her mysterious patron who had apparently promised her to be her patron, except he mysteriously disappeared in the wedding, and he doesn't know if he survived or not, so they need to go and check, and she needs to go to the farm to check about him, and Kvothe needs to go and check about the Chandri. So he goes, and he looks around, and she thinks something is strange. Blue fire. That, that can be original. And he looks around, and the wood, it's rotten through. This rich dad made this huge house for his daughter and her marriage. And it's completely new. And the wood is rotten. Like it's hollow. 
almost. It's going on. And he goes and leans on the pipe, and the pipe, and on 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 a pump, and it breaks. It's rusted through. I'm sure you all remember the song that I just talked about. The song about changing. If your bright, if your bright steel, if your bright iron sword rusts away, what to do, right? Blue fire, swords rusting away, people dying. This was the work of the Chandra. And honestly, this scene, I gotta say, was probably my, my, one of my favorite scenes in the book. Because, you know, everyone might say, Oh, what are you talking about? There's so many coolie scenes in the book. Okay, here's my reasoning for that. Um, that scene, that slow realization, like, the woods rotted, the eye, blue fire, mysterious, the suspense building, the immersion and the slow realization that even I couldn't like realize before the character because because I I I'm stupid and I didn't remember the signs about the Chandri and uh, maybe I'm losing some of my edge. No, anyways, and that that actually made me get chills because it was such a good build up and it was so immersive. So I really really love that scene and that's probably my favorite scene in the book. And so they do some investigating, they go into the woods, and there's this arc about a dragon. I know, I, I, I know, and you, you guys are gonna go like, okay, yeah, 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 okay, some arc, some, some, some investigating, wait, wait, and a dragon, wait, what? What do you, a drag, yeah, so <laughs> that should be you guys, you, your initial reaction, but honestly, I want to skip this arc because it's okay, but it's sort of generic. And it's sort of stereotypical to like the epic fantasy. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed it very, very much. Like 9 out of 10. It was really, really good. It was really well played. But, but, it definitely wasn't my favorite arc. And it, it just wasn't one of the things that resonated with me. Although it was very, very good. So I'm not going to talk too much about the dragon. And then he manages to get back to university after some adventuring and killing a dragon. Although... There's a little bit of a unexpected twist within that, although you'll have to read the book to find out. And the reasons why he killed the dragon and like what sort of happened with the dragon is um is sort of why that the hero killing the dragon sort of stereotype isn't actually this book because it's different, but anyways. And there's and then she goes to the university, back to the university, and you know the 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 basically the you know I don't want to swear but the little piece of crap you know the Draco Malfoy kiddo and he he basically he's a he's a little piece of and I don't want to speak French so I'm gonna say he's a little piece of crap he's worthless little piece of rich brat so basically what he does he goes over the cloth and he breaks his loot little son of a gun so what happens is Kvot, he goes, okay, what the heck? And he just goes into this rage and he cries out and the wind swoops down and hits the bully little freaking kid and boom. Yeah. How did that happen? We have no clue. And Master Loden, he, he cures Kvot because afterwards he was in a com coma or like this non-responsive shot state. And Kvoth finds out that he managed to call upon the name of the wind. And and the and the, the master of of names basically just tell him this really confusing story about names and stuff that I sorta of understand but I sorta of don't. You get what I mean when you read it, because I'm not gonna explain that one. And yeah, so he becomes advanced in the university and he almost gets expelled, but all the teachers like, nah, he's too he he he's too much of a freaking genius for him to get expelled, so psych, he's not getting expelled. And also he's getting whipped, but he's not getting expelled. And that's basically it. So that is pretty much what happens at the end of the book. And at the end of the book, Bast, who is like Kvoth is like in the present, like Kvoth after all this happens, the twenty year old man talking about this story. And Bast is there, and he, I th I'm fairly sure he's a demon or something, but we don't specify it. And Bast basically, at the end, goes over the chronicle and says, Hey, yo, 
I want you to do something very, very specific. I own you. What I want you to do, basically, I, I, I'm, I'm the boss here because I have claws and I will hunt you down and kill you if you, if you don't obey me. And what I want you to do is I want you to make Kvothe remember, remember his, remember his victories, remember him being a hero. Don't ask him about why he can't use sympathy or magic right now. Just, just make him, make him think about the woman, the battles, the fights, the villains. Just make him remember. Because he's been playing the bartender for a bit. And if you play the act for long enough, you slowly start to become the act. And he's losing himself. Ambassador's concerned for his master, which is sort of street, if he isn't threatening someone. And basically, and Chronicle goes, Okay, can I sleep now? Can I not die? And that's what happens. So that's pretty much the end of the book. And unironically, Kvothe learns the name of the wind by the end of the book. Because that's literally what's supposed to happen. So yeah, that, that goes on and that's the end of the book. So a couple things. I know that this, this review was really long um, compared to other fantasy book reviews. This is because this book is freaking long as hell. Heck, dude. This book is like three books combined. So this is me freaking going through like a trilogy. Like uh not not a huge trilogy, each maybe each each book being like two hundred pages, but a a pretty sizable trilogy in one book. It's a thick book. It's a thick book. So yeah, that's the reason for this being long, because there's an enormous amount of plot in this thing. And, um, yeah, and also I really, like, the plot is, of course, there's the suspense and the mysteries, and I can tell the author setting up for something greater in the future, and I have some predictions about the angels that we talk, that Kvothe talk, talks about and about and blah blah blah, and I didn't explain that, but still, there's some things, some aspects of it that I can tell, okay, he's preparing for something with this, I don't know what, but this is probably important later on in the story. So there are some things that I can um, think about. However, there are, um, and but then the plot isn't like really racy, and I enjoy like really racy, fast paced plot, and this definitely isn't really fast paced, but he makes up for it because his writing is just really immersive. It's seriously well written. It's like, you know, like super smooth butter, like just sliding. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Really, really well written really good world building and just makes you a mess in the world and you know you can't not like that like if you're a normal person at least and so that's why i really really like this book like of course if it was me i would have made the plot faster and meanwhile these days i'm receiving feedback from people saying my plot is too fast paced and i need more character development for you know the other characters in my book because Apparently, the only per per person who gets really good character development is the main character. And now I'm talking about my book, so I shouldn't talk about that. And anyways, Name of the Wind, good book, should read, pretty long, so get ready. And apparently, this is a trilogy. You can't, you can't, you can't be more happy than knowing that a good book has a sequel and another sequel, so, yeah. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching, have a great day. Like always, your plot quester and the plot quester. I definitely recommend the read, like I already said a million times. And yeah, I definitely learned a lot from this book, like um, like scene building and stuff. And I also learned, well, you know, how to sort of foreshadow and stuff. So it's really, really good book anyways. Have a great day and goodbye.